Hello Yaxley Infants, it's lovely to be with you again today, it's Reverend Sarah and it's wonderful to be able to do an assembly with you, I know I would love to be in school with you and I say that every time, I said to Mrs Edison the other day, I said oh I just keep saying to them I really would love to be in school with you and I would, but it's great that I can do an assembly and be with you this way as well. So I hope that you're all keeping well, I hope that you're enjoying being together in this term, you've done so incredibly well in this term. You have been in school all term and you've been learning and doing lots of different things that I've been hearing about so well done, that is amazing and it's very nearly half term so you can look forward to that. Now in our assemblies we've been thinking about some of the Easter stories haven't we with Jesus and his friends and all the different things that happen. Well our story today kind of comes at the end of all of our Easter stories and it's the story of Pentecost. It's a really good word isn't it? It's not a word you use every day. And Pentecost is the birthday of the church. It's a bit strange isn't it? The birthday, the church has a birthday. And the church is over 2,000 years ago. You don't have enough fingers and toes to count that so don't worry. All you need to know is it happened a very long time ago. And our story happens when Jesus is not with his friends anymore, but Jesus promises that they won't be alone and he promises that he's going to send the Holy Spirit. Now a picture or something that reminds us of the Holy Spirit is very often a dove. I think I've shown you my beautiful wooden dove before. And this is a picture that makes us, just helps us to think about this being the Holy Spirit. So what is the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? Well, there are two films that I can think about that might help you to know a little bit more about the Holy Spirit and why Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be with his disciples. The first one is the story of Pinocchio. And there's Pinocchio, but there's also a little cricket known as Jiminy Cricket. And Jiminy Cricket is Pinocchio's conscience. That's a really good word, isn't it? And a conscience is something that helps us to make those right decisions, to make the best decision. So do we decide we're going to be a ritzy rat or do we decide that we're going to be something that's not ritzy rat today? We have to make those decisions. But we have things inside us that help us make those right decisions. So our conscience helps us to do that. And Pinocchio he got into all kinds of problems. He did some of the things that we maybe wouldn't think were great things to do because he thought they'd be lots of fun. But actually they turned out to be things that weren't so great. And so Jiminy Cricket, Pinocchio's conscience comes and just helps him to get back on track and doing those right things that we know we need to do. There's also the film of Ratatouille, which is where there's a rat who's called Remy likes to cook. That is a little bit strange, isn't it? But we find in one of the scenes of this film that the rat is under the chef's hat, so you think of a big white chef's hat, and the rat is underneath that, and he's pulling the chef's hair to know which way he needs to go. So does he need to add more salt or spice? Do you just stir a bit more? And this rat is helping the chef to know the right things to do. And so the Holy Spirit is God living with us and in us and it helps us to know how we should live. There are lots of things that helps me as a Christian to know how to live. I've got the Bible, which I can read, and it helps me to know how Jesus lived and what I should do. I've got friends and family that I can ask, what do you think I should do in a situation? And you've got friends and you've got teachers that help you to know the right things to do. So the Holy Spirit is kind of like our conscience in us. It's God in us helping us to make good decisions. So Pentecost is the birthday of the church. We can get very excited about birthdays and we get very excited in the church when it comes to Pentecost because we remember that it's the birthday of the church. Now when we come to birthdays you might have my goodness some party hats, you might have some streamers, you might have some presents, some balloons and you get really excited and you prepare for it, don't you get yourself ready for it. Well Jesus' friends were getting themselves ready for what was going to happen and we know that they got in a room and they are all praying together. These are my beautiful wooden hands, they're so soft and they remind me how important praying is for Christians. And so Jesus' friends were praying together in a room and we're told that some amazing things happened as the Holy Spirit came 
to them in that room. Now, I have got a candle, oh, can you see it, in a jar, and I'm going to light it. Now, if you've watched any of my videos on YouTube, you might find that I'm not great at lighting candles, but we'll have a go. So when you light a match, you've got to be very careful, haven't you? And you can see, not in that one, that didn't work well, did it? Right, let's try again. As I said, I'm not very good with matches. Okay, that's a little bit better. Is that one going to go out? Oh dear, I'm hoping that one's not going to go out as well. So we use our flame. We use the flame of the match to light the candle. And on the front of this candle is a cross. It's a different kind of cross to what we often see. And it's a Celtic cross. But I love this light. I love this candle because it helps me to think about Pentecost. Because at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came so that Jesus' life would be shown through those first disciples and friends. And so we think about this light today. Now at Pentecost something very strange happened and we find in the story that flames rested on those disciples. The flames didn't burn as they'll burn my candle, they just lay there and rested there. We're told that there was an almighty wind that came through that room and we're told that as all these things happened the Holy Spirit was given like a present to those first disciples. And the Holy Spirit helps me as a Christian to know the right things to do. But it also means that I know I have got God with me at all times. And so I can be confident and bold because God is always with me. Now something else strange happened that day as well. I wonder in your school, how many different languages do you speak? Have you got friends that speak different languages? Well, I speak English. I also learned some sign language quite a long time ago, but I can say my name is Sarah in sign language. I can say a few other things, but I've lost quite a lot of it and forgotten it. I also know that the Welsh word for good morning is Boradar, because I used to work in a school that was on the border between England and Wales, and the children there could either say good morning or they could say Boradar, and so I learned about that. I also did some GCSE French, which is an exam uh, a little bit later when you get to secondary school or high school. As so I can say, bonjour, je m'appelle Sarah. Hello, my name is Sarah. But actually, other than English, there is no other language that I can speak really well. But you will have people in your school who speak other languages, who come from other cultures. And that's so amazing. We need to learn from them. So I wonder in your school how many languages you speak. Well, something else happened, as I said, amazing, with languages. And if you went on holiday to another country that spoke another language, you wouldn't be able to understand what they were saying. Some people have books that, that tell them what phrases mean and translate them into English. But we wouldn't be able to understand a lot of the conversations that went on there. But what happened on Pentecost is that people were speaking all different languages. But the amazing thing was that everybody could understand what everybody else was saying. Now, I probably told you before that Peter is my favourite disciple. And they went down from their upper room and they went down outside and there was already this celebration happening because Pentecost is a celebration 50 days after Easter. And it was a festival that was happening anyway. And there were lots and lots and lots and lots of people gathered there. And Peter, with the Holy Spirit, started to tell people about Jesus and about the life of Jesus. And we find that as he speaks, the Holy Spirit goes to more and more of those people who think about this light. And people were able to understand each other. And you know, that day, 3,000 people became Christians. Oh my goodness, that's more than 2,000 years ago. That's 3,000 people. Even more fingers and toes needed. All you need to know is an awful lot of people became Christians on Pentecost. And what happens from Pentecost is that those first disciples and those first Christians are sent out to tell other people about Jesus. And so Pentecost is a celebration, it's an exciting time, we remember the Holy Spirit coming.
Now you might have lots of questions after that. It's a slightly strange story. So you think about flames resting on people's heads. You might be thinking, oh, I love birthdays. I bet it was a really exciting, joyful time. And so maybe today as we have our thinking time, you might want to think, hmm, what am I excited and joyful about today? You might think, I've got some questions about this story, so think about those. So let's just think about those for a moment, and then I will say a prayer, which you can join in by saying Amen if you want to. So let's think and be quiet for a moment. I have a beautiful cross that was given to me by some friends and it has me think about that Holy Spirit, that dove coming for all people and so we remember that everybody is important. So let's pray and let's think about all the different languages and all the differences that we've got in our school and how amazing that is. Loving God, we thank you today for each other. We thank you for our friends. We thank you for our teachers. And we ask today that you will help us to learn more about each other and maybe learn a new word in a different language. We thank you for this story. As we think about the excitement and the joy of this day, we give you thanks for all of those things that we are excited about today. And so we ask that you are with us in our school, that you help us to be those people that make those right decisions today. And we can say, Amen. But it's been so lovely to be with you again today and I will probably be back with you, I should think now, after half term and we can do some more assemblies then. Take care, excellent friends. Bye.